all right what is good youtube it's your boy rebel back with another video and today we are talking about a new upscale method for z image so this is the dip node dip stands for dynamic position extrapolation now originally this node was created for flux but it has since been adapted to quen image and z image so DIP is a novel training-free method that enables pre-trained diffusion transformers to synthesize images at resolutions far beyond their training data, with no additional sampling cost. DIP takes advantage of the spectral progression inherent to the diffusion process, where low-frequency structures converge early and high frequencies take more steps to resolve. Specifically, DIP dynamically adjusts the model's positional encoding at each diffusion step, matching their frequency spectrum with the current stage of the generative process. In other words, I want you to think something similar to WAN 2.2's high and low sampling steps, but it's simply baked into one node. And all of the processes happen right here. The first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to go to your custom nodes manager. And you're going to search DYP, D-Y-P-E. It will be the first node by Wildminder. And you're going to want to go to the nightly version to stay on the latest update. After that, you can restart your Comfy UI. And then you will go to Civit AI and you will download my subgraph workflow. So the reason that I say to download my workflow as opposed to just implementing the node is simply just for the subgraph condensation. So essentially this workflow is just all of this condensed into three nodes. Um, the only reason is just for accessibility so that you're not like scrolling across the workflow to find things. It just helps with ease of access. So I do have some examples of the upscale node um, but I'm going to do something a little bit different and I'm going to showcase my new mid journey Laura for Z image with the DIP node I do have some examples prepared for you guys today so we will compare the base model of Z image with the mid journey Laura for Z image that I've created a little bit about this Laura um, it was trained on over a thousand images, actually over 1200. It was trained up to 2000 steps because I noticed that the 2200 mark things started overcooking a little bit and baking too hard. The recommended strength is 0.2 to 0.8 and my example images were generated at 0.6. So we will get right into the examples. The first being a woman in a corset style dress taking a selfie. Um, I'm not really going to say too much about these examples because I want to keep this short, but I just want you to pay attention to a few things. Number one, the lighting change. Um, a lot of these images are going to produce more dynamic contrast lighting and um, just, you know, contrast of shading and coloring and also tone changes. Um, but the other thing I want you to pay attention to is the overall aesthetic. So these images were all generated on the same seeds, but the aesthetic should change for a majority of these images to a mid-journey style image. So on to our second example. Um, you can already start to see how much effect the Laura has on skin and hair textures, as well as reflective lighting. We have another example here, um, a woman taking a selfie. Very similar, arguably but you can see with the contrast thing, this one changes a little bit. Here we have a very different selfie aesthetic, but here we are with a woman taking a selfie in a child's room. The original base image messed up the phone for some reason, but my Laura is actually trained on like over 200 selfies at different angles, poses, and phones. So I would say 99% of the time, you're never going to see this type of artifacting on my Laura with phones. Uh, our next example, we have a post-apocalyptic gas mask wearing um, guy. So this is where you'll really see the aesthetic start to take hold and the dynamic lighting and contrast values. So the hair, especially on this guy, is very dark on one side and lit from the fire on the other. You can see the reflections start to take hold on the clothing and the gas mask. Very good. Here we have a woman in a Book room taking a selfie in a green dress. 
Here we really have a strong mid-journey aesthetic change here from this hazmat suit to this hazmat suit. Very, you know, the color shift here is just really nice. Here we have a VR enjoyer. Pretty subjective, I'd say. Um, the only thing is, is a bit more contrasting and reflective value on the jacket here as opposed to here. Um, here we have an astronaut on a distant planet made of crystal. Um, this is a bit subjective. I would honestly go for either one of these. I will say the base image did a really cool style change on the suit with that galaxy type of coloring that's going on inside the metal. Very nice. So this was a good test to showcase the strength of the Laura when it comes to understanding, um, especially like abstract surreal scenes. So this is the base image here on the left. And I would argue that, you know, when you apply abstract scenes to the image, it tends to struggle a little bit with things like this because you can see obviously that this moon here is completely out of place. I mean and the Laura side completely corrected that. Moving down, we have a really cool jungle scene with a woman in a mask. Um, again, a bit subjective on which one I would choose. I do like her horned mask, but the color shift here on this mid-journey Laura is crazy. I like that green look that it gives. And also the background is a bit more uh, detailed as far as the scenery. You have a lot more going on in the background here. Still both great images. Here we have a woman on a distant planet harvesting some type of luminescent rock. Um, again, subjective. I do prefer the outfit on this subject, but I do prefer this colored rock. It is very cool. So subjective here. One thing I will say, um, this is a bit subjective, but the reflective lighting change here on this cup, you can see how bland that Z image tends to make images look. Yes, this is very abstract and surreal, but the cup in itself is very bland. There's, there's no dynamic changes here. This really provides the mid-journey aesthetic on the right side, and you do see that color tone shift on the up here and in the dish. Moving down, we have a woman in a slime-coated room with these colorful balls, pastel colors. Um, again, subjective, but I would argue that the mid-journey kind of captured the aesthetic a little bit better. Uh, here we have a man whispering to his mechanical bird. Um, the golds and the brightness and vibrancy of the Midjourney Laura just kind of did this a little bit better, I would argue. Here we have a woman with a heart-shaped clock. Uh, both of these honestly captured the Midjourney aesthetic perfectly on both sides. A um, little bit better contrasting on the Midjourney Laura, but that's, again, subjective. Um, this is a pretty much identical imaging right here just different ethnicity, so I'm not even going to argue that. Same thing here. Um, I will say, though, that this one captured a bit of a more game or Unreal Engine look to the skin texture and overall detail composition. This looks more like a real image or a selfie, so depending on what you're going for. Here we have almost a near-identical uh, man here. Just a slight lighting change on the mid-journey side, but essentially the same image. Uh, here we have a woman in a child's room. A little bit better detail enhancement on the right side, but essentially the same. Uh, here we have a little bit of a texture change on the dress. Um, I do like the lighting from the phone a little bit better here. Um, other than that, pretty straightforward. We have a nice realistic selfie. Um, 
I think that the detail was captured a little bit better on the mid journey Laura. The hair is a little bit more detailed and not as kind of blurred through fine hairs. You can kind of make out what's going on a little bit better. Uh, here we have a bit of a lighting change with sharpness increase. Pretty standard. This was a kind of a bit of a surprise. The selfie aspect of this one changed, but if you pay attention to the lighting, it's a bit more cinematic than this selfie here, which I do prefer. And our final image we have here today, which will really showcase the difference in lighting. Um, you can see how sharp the contrast is on the shadowing on his face on the mid journey Laura. And this base model more or less kind of looks like another selfie. This one is much more cinematic, which is what the Laura goes for. You know, mid journey not only captures very abstract aesthetics, but it does focus a very cinematic value behind its generations. So that's what we're looking for. But all right, guys, that's all I'm going to have for you today. Just wanted to get you this workflow and this Laura and let you guys start testing out the upscale method here, because I know this is going to help a lot of people with, you know, keeping extra weight off of your VRAM in your workflow when you're trying to generate quickly, because this node is going to solve a lot of the you know, out of memory errors that you get when you're using something like seed VR or any of those, you know, more intensive upscalers, which arguably sometimes can cause artifacting in your images, which is obviously something we don't want. So if you enjoyed what you saw today, please consider subscribing to the channel and leaving me a comment on the video to let me know how I did. You can also like the video. It genuinely helps the channel tremendously. So Get this workflow downloaded, get my Laura downloaded if you would like, and start upscaling your images natively, boys. There is no reason to use a third-party upscaler anymore when we have DIP. And all right, guys. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye.